first, so of course we're being careful, but I always like to get a lot of somebody who's like, oh, you're learning, it's your first time here. Welcome, I am Pastor Wright, and if I didn't get a chance to meet you, I'm sure missed that opportunity, but I'll do that like very soon. Uh, so welcome, we're very, very glad you're here, and just ask that uh, if you, uh, if you would, if you didn't get one of the experience guys, they're not sure to have them. And uh, so if you could raise your hand, they would be happy to bring it to you. And uh, if you grab one of those, inside of there, there's a connection card. In that connection card, there's a place where you can fill out just a little bit of information, tell us your first time guest. No have to guarantee, no going to show up at your door, anything like that. Uh, but we would love, surely love to know that you are here, so if you fill that out, we'd greatly appreciate it. Certainly notes are in there as well. Uh, one of the things we also tell people when they're here for the first time is we do not have a bucket or plates for offering that type of thing. You'll notice on the back aisles and right over there are little blue boxes. And that's where people put the time and the offering, so you can put that in on your way out uh, and, and do that. But if it's your first time here, please don't feel compelled when they have to. Yeah, we're just glad that you're here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, a couple quick announcements since I'm going to give you uh, next week. You know what it is next week? Ah, all right, but it's daylight savings time next week, right? Daylight savings time next week, so make sure you set your clocks. Make sure you set your clocks. Um, and then also, uh, something else we're doing right now, and we still need some more people in this. We are adopting the Leesburg High School staff, the entire staff, from the lunch lady to the administration teachers, you name it. We're adopting them for the last two months of the year to pray for them every day. And to make it every once in a while, drop a little note or a card to them. So if you are willing to adopt a staff member, we'd love for you to put your name on that connect card too and say adopt a member. We still need more people. Got quite a few of you that are responsible, but we definitely need some more people. We're going to do that for, for two months ending the school year. And, uh, and I, 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 I got to tell you, I had such an honor the other day. I got a phone call, and, and here's the phone call. I think this through. We already get the stories where people are like, how are y'all doing a school, a church in a school? You know what I mean? Like when I talk to people in other cities, they're like, how do y'all even do that at all? Um, but I got a phone call the other day. Pastor the White, the boys' basketball team made it to the Final Four. Would you come pray over them as a send off before they leave on the bus? So, so I got to go. I got to go on, uh, on Wednesday and go over here and meet the principal. The coach, man, the coach was like, there was a great one. I have Pastor White. And he was like, when the boys came there, he said, boys, you know, God is number one. And we got to keep that straight. I mean, this is the coach. I don't have a basketball team, but I'll just tell you some right now. Over the last five years, our boys have been to the Final Four three of the last five years. Right? Here's what's awesome, church. Did you know you have a hand in that? Did you know that you actually played a part of that? Let me explain. So, a couple years ago, we made the decision that we sponsored quite a bit of a thing called Thank God for Basketball. It's a program put on by Marcus Nightlock through the Parks and Recreation Department. But it's all about bringing them off the street and getting kids off the street, teaching them about God, teaching them some values, and then getting them to play some serious basketball. That is the theater program, and why we from high school has the basketball team that it has, and it's because you've been sponsoring for them for the last two or three years. So I just want you to know that you have a hand in that whole scenario, and they recognize that. Um, some of those boys, uh, they, they know that they got the basketball is there a lot because church of the lights. Two years ago, we didn't send out the dollars to cover their budget for a big portion of the year. I just talked to Marcus the other day. So, Marcus, you and I need to get together. The, the elders were held in this last week. What does they got for basketball? I mean, what do we need to do? How can we help and all this kind of stuff? So, church, I just want to say you have a hand in a final forest visit, um, whether you realize that or not. I just think that's pretty amazing. So, I changed my schedule. My wife and I cleared the next afternoon, and then we went to Lakeland. Final four basketball tournament, right? And uh, man, it was awesome. We played Choctawatchee Indians, Fort Walton, Fort Walton Beach, Choctawatchee Indians. And uh, they were they were ginormous. Like, they had two six nine guys and a six seven kid going off the bench. They were huge, right? And our boys are big boys, but it still it was kind of a they really go out kind of thing. They're number one. In the season, we were 12, so we had superseded already just to be there. You know, it came down to a three-point shot at the buzzer, us down by one, and it went off the rim. We lost by one point. <laughs> one point. It was amazing. But our boys did so fantastic. So you have to be praying. We're actually working on I'm going to try to get those guys from the church or some of the others. Come join us in the same morning in a few weeks, so we can honor them. Um, and so, uh, so we're going to try to make that happen. I wanted you to know you have a huge hand in the success of what's going on with that program because of your giving. 
Because of that, I just think that's, that's so cool. So, so thank you for being your faithful and your giving and all that you do. And, uh, and the last announcement is working on the word. Of course, Easter is coming up. That's why I got my pastels on, right? It's time to start looking like an Easter egg. Come on, somebody. Right? And, and, uh, but then we got Easter coming up, and the day before, we're going to have a clean up. So if you're interested in clean up, uh, Red and Trey Walker organizing that. He'll be out in the lobby. He's got all kinds of different jobs he's doing. What we want to do that day is we're going to, like, clean up trees up front. We're going to pressure wash. It's going to be a blessing from the school on top of that whole scenario. By the way, for those of you who didn't forget and you've been praying for brackets, you want to talk about brackets from the sound system that we're putting into the stadium because there's no sound system? The brackets should be in this week. So I'll let you guys know when we put up the sound system here. So thank you guys. That is so cool. It is so cool that you grab the vision. That you understand that we do set up a take down church and we're not looking for a building because we get to do all this stuff, right? Because we get to smart for kids and basketball program and the cheerleaders that were here with us before and sound system. And, and I can't wait to see. At this point, just so you know, uh, you have invested somewhere around $180,000 in Leesburg High School. So thank you for being faithful in your duty. That kind of leads me into the series that I want to jump into as we start a brand new series today. And the series is called Marked. Marked. Called by the Savior. Now, as soon as you start talking about calling, I think there's actually a little bit of a rub that happens in almost everyone. Right? Because most of us are in one of these places. Most of us, when I say calling or purpose, you're kind of going, I don't think I really know what calling is. Or I'm not sure I really can verbalize my purpose. Or I'm doing something, but is that my calling? Or is that more? And because we have this Americanized, you know, program going in our head of bigger, better, keep one of keep one of keep one of keep one moving up the ladder, we kind of wonder if what I'm doing matter or all that. So I'm going to talk for the next few weeks as we're kind of starting to head towards Easter. I'm going to talk a little bit about being marked, about being called. What does it mean to be called by God? And, and I went back to a verse that I go back to over and over and over. And it's Proverbs 29 and 18. It says this. When there is no vision, the people perish. When there is no vision, the people perish. Let me read it to you. Now, some of you may or may not know this. The Bible was not written in English. Right? They've translated it, so there's different translations. Let me read it to you in the NIV. It says this. When there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. In other words, if I don't know where I'm going or why I'm going or what I'm called to do, what does it matter? I'm just going to have fun anyway. Right? And they cast off for saying restraint. Here's another one. This will turn the message. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Anybody want to be most blessed? All right? I, I would like to be most blessed, but that's just my own preference. So I want to, this morning, I want to revision you. I want to revision each one of you on the concept that you're marked, that you're called, that you have purpose that I believe that God put in place before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Now, for some of us, that is such a hard concept because we've been told so many negative messages. We've bought so many negative messages. We're looking at the miracle of somebody getting all the terrible. Right? You're looking at the mirror and go, what happened here? Right? And, 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 and we lose vision and understanding. So let me revision you this morning. Here we go. Ephesians 1 and 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. At some point, for those of you who are a follower of Jesus, you heard the message of truth. For some of you, you're hearing the message of truth for the first time maybe today. When you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked. Even now with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who would make the positive guarantee our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. You were marked and sealed. Say it to me one time. He has saved us and called us to what? To a holy life. Not because of anything we have done. But because of his own purpose, that's his word. Because of his own purpose and grace. Ephesians 2 10, for we have come anywhere. Created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
You hear the message. You hear, you hear what's going on here. First Corinthians, I love this, because just in case you start getting a little bit cocky, the, the Bible, I love the way I put it on you, right? You can't check this out. First Corinthians 1 and 26, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Notice, you remember back when you first time you heard the message of Jesus? What were you like then? Somebody got it. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were known with birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us Wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. With all that in mind, Paul says this to us in Ephesians 4 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Boy, I need that to sink into me today. You have been called by God. Do you know how we know that? Because no matter how much money you earn, it's never enough. Right? No matter what brand purse you carry, it's it's never enough. No matter what size house or your vacation, no matter matter how many hashtag followers you've got, it it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's it's never satisfying. So Jen and I are on a little trip. over the weekend, because we went yesterday to do Patty Lagarde's uh, ashes we put out on the beach in Melbourne, which is a place where she grew up going, and I went with the family, so we went down to Melbourne. But on our way there, on our way back, we listened to this crazy podcast, a uh, podcast, podcast about the Kardashians. And it was amazing. This whole story was crazy. They have made billions of dollars off of basically social media branding. Right, just like one little version of the story, the little sister, he had it. She, she, she sold this lip stuff. I don't even know what it is, or seen it or whatever. But she branded herself so much on social media that when she opened up this 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 lip, she sold out three hundred million dollars. It was made kind of this whole thing. But what I kept hearing the story over and over was it was never enough. They were always looking for the new next business. And the next thing they're worried about. And isn't that true that we're just, there's something inside of us that feels like we're called for something more, and yet nothing in this world has the ability to satisfy. That's because you're a calling. A God given call. Right? So, here's the question What's your calling? You pray. Father God, would you speak to us? The next few moments, in truth, our way, would you download the wisdom of heaven into us through your Holy Spirit? We ask it in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Man, in this, in this culture of influence and TikTok fame, world building personal brandage, right? Everybody trying to secure a side hustle, make it for themselves, become an influencer. I want to reclaim some sacred language. Call it. Call it. Let me show it to you, actually, in the Greek. The word kaleo means to call. And it is the root of 16 words used throughout the, uh, the, the Bible that are very, very important words. Like kalesis, which, which means call. Kletos, which means, I'm sorry, calling. Kletos, which is call, which is what we just read in this moment ago. Paraclete. Paraclete. It's proper, but it means to come alongside. Oftentimes, it's the way we go back and back with someone else, and they cover my back and I cover yours. In other words, I'm supporting you in your calling. It's also used for the Holy Spirit as He supports us in His calling. His calling is to support us in our calling. And then, Paracletus, advocate, our intercessor, and then ultimately, Ecclesia, which is what we translate into English in church. And currently, if you what it means, is the call out ones. We are called out to be something more and something different than this world. And that is a big, big deal. Now, here's what's going on with a lot of you right now as I talk about this. There's more negative 
work is going through your head right now than positive work. Because when we start talking about calling, most of us come to a place where we go, I think I'm just fine. I want to be up to hold for that now. You know, it's, it's, it's that guy that looked across the way and saw that beautiful girl and thought, ah, I think she's the one. I think that's my destiny. And he hadn't dated and he was nervous. And some super stud came in and asked her out now they were married and have beautiful kids. And this kid's a great, amazing story. And he thinks I blew it. Because I lost out. I had the opportunity, one of my favorite things to do during the week while I was on Wednesday nights, when I get to meet with our 20 somethings. We've got about 15 or so 20 somethings that are coming to thrive. But what I'm hearing them and seeing them is, they feel like they're behind. Like, come on, y'all, they're like 20 years old. Really? I'm like, oh, you know, I missed the semester and I'm like right a mess. And, but like, there's this, this thing inside that I see every week in their prayer request. And there's this, you know, like, I know I'm going to do something, but I'm on my way to do it. And oh, God, we pray for the we pray for the wisdom, then we pray for discernment, the school, and all this. And, and I gotta look at them and I think, you know, it's no different when you're not in the night. I think we're all going, what? Why, what's, what's my calling? I mean, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What is this, this destiny thing? And because we're American, a calling's gotta be huge. Right? It's gotta be big, like, I don't know, if it's ministry, it's gotta be a big boom. And what I want to really encourage you with today is, I, I think, I think calling starts somewhere else that may be where we are. So let me give you three points today. Because I'll teach them to give you three points. Because I'm hoping today that some of you are going to hear something that's going to stir something in you, and you're actually going to start to feel a sense of calling before you even leave here in this place today. Number one, calling is about who you are before what you do. Calling is about who you are before what you do. Who before do? God is calling you to a who before he's calling you to a do. In other words, he's more concerned with who you are than what you're actually doing. It's going to start in that place. Look at 2 Timothy 1 and 9. For God saved us and called us. Now, after this, it doesn't say he called us to be missionaries in Africa. It doesn't say he called us to be a great second grade school teacher. It doesn't say he called me to be a professional gamer. What kind of job is that? But anyway, some of y'all wish. I wish I could just sit around playing video games every one of them. But anyway, that's not what it says. It says for God saved and called us, listen, for a little holy life. Here? To live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Calling is as much who you are becoming as it is what you are doing. We're to be set apart. We're to be different from this world. The Bible never talks about calling from the standpoint of your career. He talks about character. He talks about who I am. See, the Bible calls you to be like Jesus. We ask, what am I called to do? A better question is, who am I called to become? Who am I called to become? See, if calling is only about the do, it gets confusing, right? Come on, you're trying to figure out what am I supposed to do? When am I going to do it? Right, like, and, and, and I'm all of us. Maybe, maybe you're a business and you're trying to figure out a business decision right now. And you're trying to figure out, anybody got kids? Everyone's just killing it, parenting, right? Come on. Parenting is hard. Parenting's confusing. You're going to make you lose your hair. You know what I'm saying? Marriage. Everybody's marriage is perfect. Most of the guys, some of the guys are like, you know, the choice, like, no. But listen, 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 listen. Reality being as a life is hard. Now, if it's, a and if it's just about what you're supposed to do, that gets extremely confusing to do. The ministry that you are called to do 
follows the who. He knows who you are meant to be. And you ever think how many times in ministry I've had somebody go to the church and they are the next great TV James. They're going to give me their resume and they're going to tell me their background and they've preached all over the world and this and that and I should give them a chance to preach on Sunday morning. Right? And somebody comes in and they're the next great worship leader or singer and so Martin should just put them right on the stage. And here's what, here's, here's what I want to say to you. I'm going to be very, very transparent for just a moment. A number of years ago, I was over at the Father's house. And I was slated to be the next senior pastor. We were going through this transition process. And it didn't work out. And can I say this to you very honestly today? This guy's hand. And I have been a mess of that church. Because at that point, your pastor's character wasn't developed enough for me to hold that position and do it well. I needed to just to go through a few things. I needed to go through some bumps. I needed to go through some few things on sharpen. Think back to Joseph. Do you remember Joseph? Remember he had the dream? Right? And he was with brothers, because this is what kind of put kids in, like especially some of you like our siblings. Younger siblings. Did you want your parents to do that? No, no, you know what I'm saying. Right? And then there comes Joseph. He's like, I had a dream. I'm working about over me. <laughs> He's not ready to be second in command of Egypt. That's going to take 20 years of going to prison and going out. Why? Because it wasn't as much about the do as it was the who. The who has to be the who in us. The character in us is the foundation of the home. You live in a home right now. You probably haven't thought about your foundation. If you've thought about your foundation, we will leave a reason to the problem. Right? But that who, the character inside of us, is the underlying whole scenario. And so why do people have moral failures? Because they get raised up to a stage that's bigger than their who. They get raised up to a place of do that cannot be supported because I don't have the character to support that. Are you tracking on me? And some of us have been there, have been there. Or we've raised up to a place and we weren't ready. When we blew it, when we failed, when we fell apart, when the God said, let me teach you what a process of who. And this is kind of a dangerous question to ask. Let me, let me ask you a question. Any of you feel like that I'm called to preach? Would you agree with that? Okay, here's what would be cool. We'll go back to school. <laughs> but I'm also called to be a husband. So let me ask you what would happen if Jim and I were having a conversation over the weekend and we got to the end of this, we'll call it a discussion. And we got to the end of the discussion and I went, okay. Now, anyone that would like to give your life to Jesus, just raise your hand. We'll pray in front of you. And my wife will look at me like, what's wrong with you? Right, because listen to me, just because I'm called in this area doesn't mean I have the character to carry it over to the area. I'm also a dad. My like, kids are going through stuff, they're dealing with stuff in their life, but I'm having to walk through those challenges with them. Right, and I'm also a part of this community. I'm also the chapel of these great places where I mean, there's other pieces of part, but what it's going to take to be able to help withstand those is I've got to have a character. They can hold the weight. Are you having hearing what I'm saying? The knowledge starts with who more than the do. Yeah, I'm called to preach. But more than preach, I'm called to live a holy life. See, you can be a charismatic leader but not keep your word and you're not fulfilling your calling. You can be a good preacher and neglect or abuse your family and you're not fulfilling your calling. God would rather me do anything else with integrity than be a pastor with that. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, it's about who way more than it is about do. Number two, calling isn't about something important you do in the future. It's about your faithfulness to Jesus today. I said, let me say that again. Calling isn't about something important to do in the future. It's about your faithfulness to Jesus today. Look at Colossians 3 and 17. And whatever you do or say, do it, whatever you do or say. I love that. I almost look at that like you come out. I don't want to tell you. That's not going to work. Say, whatever. Yeah, you're going to talk. You talk a lot. Whatever you do or say, 
even as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. See, whatever, the do is not the priority of who is. Who you are and what he's called you. And as a matter of fact, I think there's a phenomenal example of this. That's in Mark chapter 10 and Mark chapter 1. You can read the whole story yourself, but I'm going to have to be part of a synopsis that I think will drive this home. So, they are, um, <laughs> they're walking around with the disciples. Two of the disciples, James and John, come to Jesus and ask this question that some of you as a parent maybe have been asked before. Hey, uh, hey, Dad, I'm asking some just say yes. Exactly what James and John does, right? They come to him and they look at Jesus. Will you give us whatever we ask? And Jesus goes, what do you want? And they go, uh, could we like sit on your right and your left to your door? And just ask to be number two and number three. They just ask, like, I want to be raised up. I want to be important, right? Well, Jesus says, you know, you can handle that and we move on. Here's what's amazing. The very next chapter, Mark, uh, Mark chapter 11, they're walking triumphal entry. In other words, this is Jesus going into Jerusalem. We'll be celebrating this too on Palm Sunday. And they're walking in. And, and you can only imagine, any of you ever met like a famous person or walked around with somebody important? And you know how it just, I don't know, makes you feel important? No, no, no. And so I can only imagine, here comes Jesus, and here comes the disciples, and the disciples, man, I just got this picture, I got a little swag on, you know what I'm saying? And they're walking with Jesus, yeah. And that often in bad, but we never think the time to ask that question. Mark 11, verse 1 says this. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethphage and Bethlehem and the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead. It was also that he doesn't tell us much to do. I thoroughly believe it's James and John. Because you will see in just a minute, that's just how Jesus rolls. Right? It says that he sends two of them ahead. What does he say? Mark 11, 2 and 3. Go into the village over there, he told them. As soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey. Tie it, but no one else has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, what do you do? And just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Now, wait, wait a minute. Well, when you said you're going to send us to do something, I'm like, we're going in there and call fire down with the Pharisees or cash out and say, you put us on a donkey, didn't you? Like it has to be, we, we have to be two or three. Now we got dummy duty. And I can only imagine there's some here today that they should feel like you're on dummy duty. Like what you're doing in your life right now is not so fantastic or it's a little tough or the job's a little weird right now or you don't really like it or you don't care for it or whatever. I just want you to hear. You are where you are today for a reason. The who is being developed in you. The character, the foundation is being laid for what it is that God wants to do in your life. And listen to me. You have to choose to participate or not. You've heard the story. You've heard us talk about people talking about going around the same mountain. Come on, anybody else? Anybody else do it like I do? Like, I get mad at myself. Because I'm like, I have no idea. You know what? Why did you leave this or in the left place again? Like, what? Why did you run around this mountain? Why is it that if so many of us, listen to me, so many of us for years are running around the same mountain because we're just trying to get to point B. We're just trying to get to the do. And we have no idea that what God is trying to do is he's trying to develop our character. And until we participate with him, guess what? He's going to keep giving us those challenges and go around the mouth until we are going. Because he's trying to develop the character inside of me. Which leads us to the third point. The third point is this. The size of your assignment never determines the significance of your impact. The size of your assignment never determines the significance of your impact. And that's what the disciples are about to learn. Shepherd boy named David picks up some small stones, and what does he do? Takes them a giant. Right? And as a small boy brings a lunchable. 
That keeps on thousand. And in this story, what these two disciples have no idea, all the I used to imagine. I can just imagine, because if it really was James and John, that they really did have the call to actually come to Jesus and say, yo, give us three things, we're right about it. And I can only imagine them walking like, don't you? Right? Because he's coming in on the top. I wonder how many of us, maybe you're in that place right now. Don't you think it stinks, man? My child right now, huh? Man, I'm, I'm married. My kid is this. Man, God would just, would just want the fire open. And God has got you right where he wants you right at this moment. Because it's not about the do. It's not about that position. It's about what he's developing inside of you. It's about the character that he's trying to develop and put inside of you. And he can put you to the place that you are able to be successful and overcome the enemy. Because let me just tell you, the bigger you climb up that supposed ladder, the more of a target gets put on your back, everybody. Come on. So it requires a, a clue that is foundational. They don't realize they're fulfilling prophecy. Come on, somebody. This is prophetic that he's going to ride in on a donkey. You know what they're doing is they're looking at donkey duty. Instead of understanding, I've got this part that I'm playing that is prophetic. It's amazing. And the two disciples that delivered the donkey to carry Jesus to his calling. Wow. Why are you coming? Why are you coming? It's confusing if it's just about them. But it's not that you make it about faithfulness to Jesus today. When you are faithful and generous and by yourself, when you are, when, when your life is focused around making Jesus known, when there is less of you and more of him, you don't have to find your calling. Your calling will find you. Scripture says this, your gift will make room for you. You know what that means? You don't have to choose your own heart. You don't have to network this right. Thank God, the creator of the universe, who set up things for you to do before you were born in your mother's womb. When he sees the character that is required to do the next part of what it is, it will walk out straight to your front door. You hear what I'm saying? But we are trained. We're trying. We're good. But if we can wear social media, we can't work and manipulate people. Right? Play, you play the game. I grew up, my mom was that kid for covers and sex in our small town, my dad was the main part of it. I was eight years old, I could work a room. I was a chamber, after hours meeting, oh, that wife was me. Well, eight year old, he was so big and bad. See, you can manipulate, you can play a game, you can go with that, but listen to me. When you focus on who it is that God has called you to be, when you get in His Word, and you don't just read His Word, His duty, Come on, somebody. Sometimes you realize you're allowed to be reading this word. Because we've made it that. When reading this word is not something I have to do, it's something I'm going, what can I learn about him and what can I learn about me? When I'm developing the who, oh, the color will come. It'll come straight to your front door. So whatever the assignment is today, do it for his glory. Whatever your donkey duty is, do it for your story. Be a good friend to somebody who's hurting or who's a lousy friend. Love a spouse when they're difficult to love. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you love them. It's hard. Do something without getting any credit whatsoever. Give thanks in the middle of a trial. Some of you out there, you've got amazing education. You want to do so much more. But right now, this season is about you raising the name. A calling. Come on now. That's a huge call. It's a missed calling in this day and age. You're building business right now, and you're like, well, that's not very spiritual. Of course it's spiritual, because it's all about integrity. It's not what you're doing. It's who you are in that place. And if you will take your business, and you will put integrity in that, God will bless it. God will raise you up and use you as an example into the community. So stop watching the numbers. You know what hurts? Yeah, you got a little 
information. So, we're going to take what I'm talking about with I apologize right now, I'm not going to look at We might have gone through a few cars in the last couple of days. I'm not looking. I don't think there's a place happening. You know, I have gone through a few cars in the last couple of years. And you know what happens every time I think I'm buying a car and buy a used car? And the person will say, okay, it's $2,500 for this car. And I'll put it on here. You know where I'm going? Well, I'll put it on here like 500 so you don't have to pay so much in sales tax. Next question. You want to save a little money? You want to be blessed. See, that's what I'm looking for. So to give us the who. Are you the person that will go, no, 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 this is what we pay. I need to pay the right amount, pay the sales tax. Yes, it's going to hurt. It's a lot more money. I probably could get away with it. That's not the point. The point is that God is looking for a people that say, I want to live a holy life. And when he sees the character inside of you, and when he sees you step up to that, then at that right point, he will raise you up like he raised up Joseph this time. Like he has raised, raised up so many others over time. See, there's some words that we're all working for. There's these words that we've heard. We've been in church long enough. And we're going to stand before God. And there's these words that we want to hear. And I tell you what, those words are not. Those words are not well done, good, and important servant. Those words are well done, good, and faithful servant. Be faithful in the sin, pay an old sales tax. Faithful in the sin, not cheating on the taxes. Faithful in the sin, doing the integrity thing, doing the right thing, when nobody's looking and nobody else cares, and it won't really matter. But can I tell you what matters to your God? Who's wanting to develop the room inside of you so he can raise you up to a greater do, to what he's called you to do? It's just going to take that the character to support it. God is more concerned with who you are becoming than what you are doing. Even if it's donkey duty, do it for the glory of God. Donkey duty is developing the who. You are not called to be important, you are called to be faithful. So let me circle back to Ephesians 4 and 1. Paul's words. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, thank you. Thank you. To lead a life worthy of your color. For you have been called by God. Come on, church people. How about we go this week and just do it a little bit better? A little more pure, a little more holy. You, you're, you're struggling with that stuff on the internet? Tell somebody. We'll get you some help. Or we'll support you. You're struggling in, in, in your marriage or doing that a perfect thing, you need, you need to tell somebody. You need to listen to me. God wants holy, and when he sees holy, the rest comes to calling on So for some of you that are like, I don't know if I ever hit my collar on that, or if I was supposed to go to school, I think I missed out here, no, this and that. You're still running around that mountain because you haven't realized that the news are what we do. And when the who comes, the calling comes with it. Does that make sense to anybody this morning? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Let me pray for you and ask God to help us. To be who he's called us to be. Would you play the rest of the song? Why do we repent? First, from chasing after things of this world. We're chasing after the do first. Trying to to get the cart before the horse here a little bit. And Holy Spirit, would you bring a little conviction to our heart right now? Areas where maybe we're fudging it a little bit. We're bending the rules a little bit. We're walking away from your way or what your Bible what your word says. So we open ourselves to that conviction today. We open ourselves to hear from you, God, and would you would you give us strength to do something about it? To get somebody to, to help us and walk through that, to do it in a holy way. But God, we want to be your church. We want to do great things for you. But we know this thing's gotta happen first. So speak to us right now, Holy Spirit. Specific areas that we need to make some, some little tweaks this week. Some little changes. If 
you're here and your head bowed and your eyes are closed and you have never had a moment where you heard the word of truth that I've not heard of and responded to it and gave your heart to Jesus. I want to give you some words. They're just words. There's nothing holy or sacred about the words I want to give you. What is sacred is your sincerity. That today, if you want the creator of the universe to save your soul, the creator of the universe will give you an opportunity to spend eternity with him when it's about surrender. So if that's you, maybe you would pray something like this, Jesus, to me, I surrender my heart to you in my life. I don't understand it all. But I feel the pull. And as best as I understand today, I'm going to be a follower of yours. Would you grow me in this stuff? Thank you for loving me and for giving me the message that I commit my life to you today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Good job. And so, man, I hope you're inspired to go through the hoop. Right? Not worried about the do so much. I'm focused on the who, all the rest of them will work out. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to close out in worship in just a moment. But I, uh, I, I want to say to you today is, is, is life step one. And for those of you who have not been through life steps, you hear me talk about it every week. I, I, I want to say this to you. I want to be like Paul. I want to thank you to come and be a part. It's important. It's a journey we want to take you on. It's a part of this whole thing. We want to develop the who in your life. We want you called to be. And this whole process is going to be a discovery of purpose. For what it is that God's calling you to do. So, man, you stay with us today for about 45 minutes. You go out the door here and down the hallway. There's a sign in the hallway that the room's called the rock. I'll meet you there in just a few minutes, and I'll take you through a little journey. We're going to do four weeks. Give me four weeks. Give me four weeks to walk through this journey. See what kind of will say to you. I think, I think you'll be pleased with what God may do. If you'll just give a little bit to come and join us. Does that make sense? Let's do this. Let's stand on our feet. I'm going to pray one last quick prayer. You are dismissed and you're going to be a for the team of real worship so you can worship with them. Or you can go to the kids and whatever for the patrons. Help us to be willing. We will call us back and pray in Jesus' name. We will call us back and pray in Jesus' name. We will call us back and pray in Jesus' name.